Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Paola Royal from Healthy Living with Paola Royal. I support people to increase their quality of life through understanding the way they eat, think and live so that they are able to live the life they want to. Today as my guest, I got Vena Haywood. Hello, Verna. How are Hello. you? Hello. <laughs> and uh, just to introduce Verna quickly, Verna got a BSc in International Spa Management, is the founder of La Via Spa, a global wellness institute ambassador, member of the UK Spa Association, member of the Federation of Holistic Therapies, independent Avon consultant and a therapist with over 20 years of experience. So it's lovely to have you here, Verna. Lovely for you to have me. I'm really appreciating that. <laughs> yes. So like some of you maybe know, I'm all about our innate ability of self-healing, if it is in physically or mentally. And uh, I was interviewed the other day by Verna, which was very nice. Thank you so much for having me on your site, which is um, La Via Spa on Facebook or on LinkedIn. You can find her or you can find the interview as well on uh, Healthy Living with Paola Royal on Facebook. And um, we had a lovely conversation there beforehand as well, where I found out loads about Verna and her <laughs> upbringing. And I saw that she has a lot of uh, same interests um, coming in from our ability of self-healing when we take um, the nature into um, uh, when we take nature to support our self-healing system when you think we are nature yeah. we are part of it yeah. and we got everything what we need already there in us and herbs and plants to support this self-healing system. I mean, we got receptors in us, they're already pre-existing in us, and uh, they help us with our healing. And uh, so there you can see really closely the connection to nature. And um, Verna was telling me uh, about her upbringing and her uh, life with her grandma, which uh, sounded very, very interesting. And I wanted, or I think it's, it's important um, for people to hear more about what Verna does for her clients, for people out there, and uh, maybe you're interested as much as I am to hear more about it. So all to you, Verna, tell us more and um, let me know or let our listeners know um, how, how, what you learned as a child, how is that helping you in your work today? And what is your message to, to people out there? So let's start with your grandma and your upbringing and see. Okay, all right. Thank you, Paola, for having me on your program. It is just wonderful to be with you again. Um, it's, just, it's just so much energy that flows when we come together. It's unbelievable. And as um, Paola said, nature has everything in it for us. As a young girl growing up, I, you know, I play hide and seek. I play with the dirt, making my sister and I making little house and using the dirt and using the, the things around our garden as maybe selling in the market. I never thought I was going to come and be using that in what I'm doing now. Um, you know, nursing is something that I wanted to do because I wanted to emulate my big sister. Um, she became a nurse, and I thought, I'm going to follow in her direction. She is my hero, Beatrice um, Etienne. She is my hero. So that's what I wanted to do. And growing up in Grenada, I was born in Grenada, um, so I am the original Spice Girl. That's how I consider myself. That has nothing to do with the Spice Girls and their song, but it's just the original. You know what I mean? <laughs> Grenada is all about spices. Um, my grandmother had lots and lots and lots of land. I think she had over 26 acres of land. Mountainous, where we grow bananas. We used to export cocoa and nutmeg um, and bananas. Um, we used to eat off the land. So everything was in the garden. Um, different land produced different um, 
plants and herbs, produce different fruits. So we ate everything from our garden. There was nothing that we had to go and purchase. There were some things, yes, we had to purchase flour and sugar and stuff like that, but anything else you can think of, provision, it was in the garden. If you get a cut, if you get a bruised, it was in the garden to heal it. If you were drinking tea, it was called bush tea in those days. Now we have the fancy word herbal tea. <laughs> uh, bush tea? Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So uh -huh. we what called is, it bush tea. bush tea. What is that? Bush tea is basically the herbs. So we went and we, now it is all refined, but we went and picked if it was, um, if it was orange peel, we, 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 picked the or we picked the orange, we peeled it, and we dried the, the rind. And we used that to make tea. So that was orange tea, orange okay. peel tea. So bush tea friend, is not a certain tea. It is um, different kinds in different seasons. Or... Yeah, it was whatever was there. Um, so it wasn't, we didn't go out and buy buy the tea we had the cinnamon and we had whatever it is so if we had a problem it was about taking the cinnamon and boiling the cinnamon with your nutmeg or your clove putting that together and she used to make a little concussion for us whatever our ailment was so it was not about taking medication um i only remember very very young i had an uh just a maybe half a half a, of an aspirin for what I can't remember, but I just remember that was the only time as a child I had um, something called aspirin. Everything else, if we had a headache, if we had a tummy ache, it was go pick such and such bush by such and such tree. She knew exactly where to send us. And there were certain, certain bushes that we had to pick before six in the evening. So, or early in the morning with the dew fall. So, <coughs> I'm sorry. So it was quite interesting, but I found it um, fascinating. Did you as go to the said, moon phases as well? Did you? Oh yeah, it was hard to do with the moon as well because the thing is, is that my grandmother always looked at seasons. So for her, seasons play an important role in our health and well-being. We had to cleanse our body every season. So before the new season starts, when the old season is coming to an end, she gave us what we call now detox. We had a purge, <laughs> ah, basically. So can I just interrupt? So not only in spring, you, you did your detox. So every time when the season ended and a new come, yeah. when you detox, how interesting. Because yeah. you say as well um, today that you actually, you know, with them, um, you know, I work with fasting and stuff. Yeah. And uh, there are doctors who work out there with fasting. So you, they say like every three months, yeah. you, you can go into a slightly longer first, you know. I mean, you can, you, you can. You can do that on your own. But, you know, so detoxing, you know, it's not only for spring. But no. oh, that's an interesting one. Mm -hmm. No, because for her, every season brought plants and herbs, which has different um, nutrients for our body. And we need those nutrients to work in us. And there was something called enzymes. And I used to think when she said, you need to eat fruits because they have the enzymes because your body need those enzymes to keep building you up. And I used to think, what nonsense is that? Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, as children, you think, oh, of she's course. crazy. She's local. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Why did our parents leave us with our grandmother? She's going to kill us. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, dear. Uh -huh. But, you know, it was like that. And it, when we say to her, she will mix whatever it was, and she will give us a drink. And it, it doesn't take, taste pleasant, but my goodness, we had no, as kids growing up, we had no sort of ailments where we needed to go to the doctor. The only time we needed to go to the doctor was for typhoid, chicken pox, um measles and things like that that's the only time or if we if we got a a prick with something and we needed a tetanus injection those were the only time we went to doctor mm -hmm. everything else was done at home whether we had a bruise there was something in the garden we will send she will send us to get bring it to her she'll pass it over the fire warm it up and put whatever ointment on it 
put it on our wound and just did that every day so until our wound healed. Mm -hmm. So there was no going to help. I didn't know what a health center was because we, we never went to health centers. Mm -hmm. um, yes, if we had, can't even remember going to the hospital. I won't even remember going to the hospital when my, when my dad broke his hand. Mm -hmm. But other than that, it wasn't, we wasn't visiting hospitals and doctors or any, you know, things, things of that nature because as far as she was concerned, it was in the garden. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is we needed to heal our bodies was in the garden. Mm -hmm. If it is she was making different types of um, detox for us, uh, she will get the fishermen, when they go fishing, bring her a gallon of seawater. Not from the shore, it had to come from deep within the ocean. Okay. And then she would make medicine for us to... <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> medicine with it for us to drink and again i never i looked at it as as i said my grandmother was you know something was wrong with her yeah, but yeah. now doing what i'm doing i'm so blessed to have been brought up by her that now i can use all of that in my in my field to help Can my clients to give them you? advice yeah so do you use it uh, first of all do you use it as well for yourself today when you when you find you you know you get symptoms of um, of a flu or something you know do you still use use that yeah i have you? started i wasn't i mean i have drifted so far away from what i was brought up on that you know you you become so um used now to the pharmaceutical way of healing your body Mm -hmm. But those things have a lot of chemicals in it. And of course, your body is going to absorb those things. You can't release it as fast as the normal things. Because when you're taking something that have chalk binding, coating, and fillers, it causes other adverse effects on your body. And so taking the natural things. So I have started using natural things where I can mm -hmm. um, to to combat certain sickness like um if i have the flu mm -hmm. um there were things that she used to give us to sweat our body out mm -hmm. i will do that there were things that she used to make us uh, make for us uh, to drink and i will do that as well and now i've started looking at detoxification and that's one of the reasons why i became an urban consultant because the plant extracts that they use the plant everything is made from herbs and plants and because everything is made from that, you're going to get all the nutrients that your body needs. Mm -hmm. Most people will say, oh, it's vegan, so I'm not going to have it. But vegan, veganism is something that was given to us from the foundation of life, where we were given plant and herbs. So everything was plant, herbs, legumes, mm -hmm. because they have all the nourishment, all the nutrients, your vitamins, your potassium, your protein, all of that you can get for that. Later on came meat. Meat wasn't the first thing that was given to us when creation was created. Mm -hmm. It was plant and herbs. Mm -hmm. So if we go back to nature, nature have everything in us for, for us, Paola, in terms of our health and our wellness and looking after for our planet. And I think what has brought it so close to me and why I, I started the program where I had you on is that I saw during this pandemic that so many people were getting sick and so many people were, um, were dying and it was mostly affecting people of my race uh, in terms of obesity and all of that because we've drifted so far away from w our norms that we forget what it is we should have and what it is we shouldn't have. Not because we moved to another what country it? What, means you should forget. Well, what is it we should have? What, what is it what you're talking about, you know? Well, so, in uh, terms of using plant and herbs, uh, mm -hmm. because it helps to build your immunity. If you think about you eating, um, uh, I don't know, these fast foods and microwave foods and all these, because it's easy, it's quick to do, rather than doing something from scratch. And, you know, it's easy because you're working so much. You're running, you know, you, you work and you work till late. So you get home, you just want to put something in the microwave and eat that. But when you think about all the chemicals that are in there, that have an adverse effect on our organs. If we were to eat more naturally and get all the natural nutrients 
that our body needs, then our body is able to cope. We wouldn't still feel so stressed. We wouldn't feel so tired. We wouldn't feel bloated. We wouldn't start putting on the weight that, you know, we, we shouldn't have because we're not exercising enough. We're not doing enough walking, maybe meditation and all of that. So all of that has an effect on our system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why I am so passionate that when I treat my client, it needs to come from within. Um, it cannot just be a head knowledge thing. It has to come from deep within you, like yourself. When you're treating your client, you have got to find out a little bit more about them, what their lifestyle is, because that's the only way you can treat it. That's the only way you can treat the, the symptoms or most the disease, like hospitals, they just give you medication. That's just treating the symptom. But we want to treat the problem to get rid of it. And the only way you can do that is working from within. Because when you work from within, it comes out. And that's why my grandmother used to think every time the season changed, because different foods come within the season, the moon has something to do with it. You have your farmer, your farmer plant by the moon, your fisherman fish by the moon. You know, um, in the years gone by, our ancestors, they did everything by the moon, basically. And that plays an important role. Why it is when the astronauts have to go up into the into uh, the atmosphere. Why do they do it at, uh, at certain times? Everything has a season. And to every season, there is a reason. I that one with the astronauts. That, uh, uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. So, so I, I tend to look at the seasons and everything like that because nature has everything. Every, every, everything you can think about, nature has it. And we just have to accept that nature, we are part of nature. That's who we are. We are part of nature. We cannot separate the two. We have got to bring it together. And as we bring it together, then you can look at it as our foundation. If you don't build your house in a solid foundation, it will crumble. Yeah? So nature is part of us. We are nature and nature is us. And we just have to accept it and, and work with it. And that's how I... I I work, and that's, I, that's why I'm so privileged that I had the upbringing that I had, even though I thought it was hocus pocus. Now I know it's not hocus pocus. She had so much wisdom, so much knowledge, so much understanding that when she said eat it, they, they didn't know how to explain it to us. Why it is we needed to have that? They just know they have got to give it to us, and they will give it to us. I mean, back in Grenada, we had different seasons. We had different fruits and veg. And there was something that we used to have, like um, sometimes we get tapeworms. And, and my grandmother will either see us um, scratching our bum or doing something that we shouldn't be doing. And then she will say, what's wrong? And you will just say, well, mm, I'm just feeling itchy or whatever the case might be. And then she will have you, when you do your stool, she would have a look at it. I mean, yeah, <laughs> she, yeah, was like, yeah, she was yeah, like yeah. a doctor. Yeah. She would look at it, mm -hmm. and then based on whatever worm she saw within your stool, you had a medicine to drink yeah. to get that, to get rid of it. Yeah. So and tell, then, me, tell, me, Vern, tell me, Verna, um, what, what herb or what plant would you say you most likely you're still using today uh, or stuck in mind for you to use, um, which, which you find, you know, it's, um, it, it's stuck with you, you know, out of your childhood and you took with you. And aloe vera is something that stuck with me. My gran used to use aloe vera a lot. Um, some, of the, some of the herbs, we don't get them here. Bay leaves and things like that. So bay when leaves? I go, oh, I have bay, bay leaves. We used to put bay leaf in our, in our tea and in food and things like that. Certain foods she cooks, mm -hmm. she would put bay leaf in that. Um, chocolate. We used to make our own chocolate um, because we, we, we grew lots of cocoa. Mm -hmm. um, coconut. Coconut. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. Coconut was coming out of her ears. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, you can use it for a lot. It's internal and external. I mean, yeah. I was cooking yesterday with coconut. I used the rest I had on my, on my hands because I was doing the pan with coconut oil. I just used on my skin instead of washing it off, you know. And so you can use it for absolutely everything. Mm. Exactly, exactly, yeah. exactly. <clears throat> to the point, a couple months ago, I, I, I got six coconuts. I broke them and I normally would grate them, but we have blenders now. There is no grating. Just put it, cut it up very finely and put it in the blender. And then you get the coconut milk and you squeeze that. And I made coconut oil. Now, the coconut oil that I made, and if I go to the supermarket and I buy coconut, is entirely different. Oh, so okay. it makes me think that some of the coconut oils that you will find in the supermarket have additives and preservatives in it. How do you do your own coconut oil? Tell me about okay, that. The way, the way you do it is that I got, um, uh, oh, I, should have, I should have gotten it for you. I got, um, you, know, you know, like a goose, let's say your, a jar, like you will get your goose fat in when you buy a goose, yeah? So I got six coconuts and I, I um, crossed the shell and I, I cut it into small cubes mm -hmm. and put it into the blender, mm -hmm. put water in it and blend it so it becomes very fine. And then I take a strainer and strain the milk out and then put some more water and wash the coconut, get the extra milk out of that. Yeah. And from that, I then put it in a, a tub, a big enough can, and leave it, cover it and leave it overnight. And all the milk will come to the surface. Sorry, you, the fluid you leave overnight or the fluid? Yes, the fluid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the fluid. I just leave everything overnight and the, the milk will come to the surface. Mm -hmm. And then I skim that off the next day and put it in um, one of those cast iron pots. Yeah. I put it in that and then boil it. And you have to continue, keep continue stirring it. Otherwise it will just What do you boil? Burn. The, the milk you boil? The milk, yeah. Okay. The milk. So I will use the milk and boil it. And then it boils down and down and down and down. And you get your coconut oil. Ah, mm. from the milk. Mm. It's unbelievable. It's so different. If you were to try it, mm, so what I'll do with you one of these days is that we will do something like this together. Yeah. And I'll get some coconut yeah. and then I'll show you how oh, it's done. Yeah, how to do it. Yeah. Fantastic. So okay. I'll show you because you can make your own coconut. Yes, it's work. But yeah. when you've done it, the joy you feel in doing it, and you, if you compare that to some of the coconuts, not all, Oh, Some okay. of the coconut oil you will buy in the supermarket, mm -hmm. you will realize that they have additives and preservatives in it as opposed to your natural one that you have just made. Yeah, it, oh, is, it smells different. delicious. Mm -hmm. And my grandmother used to use the coconut oil, as you say, you use it to moisturize uh, your body with. We use it in our hair because she would use the coconut and, and blend that with the petroleum jelly, use it in our hair for a hair cream. Um, we cook with it, coconut, we could make um, coconut tea, um, put it in our chocolate tea. So we put it in our chocolate, the coconut milk, and we Ooh. make our chocolate tea. We would make, um, put coconut in our soup, make um, pea soup or rice and peas, and that have coconut in it. And we use coconut for every single thing. So where everybody now is on a, had I not think my grandmother was Juju, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had my own factory <laughs> and, creating, <laughs> and creating my coconut like my brother is. My, you know, my brother lives in Curacao and my brother made coconut oil um, mm -hmm. because we just brought up with that and it was just natural for yeah. us to, to use that. Yeah, so yeah it's, so it's somehow, wonderful. So somehow we, we, we lost it on the way, didn't we? What do you reckon yeah. we just... Yeah, I mean, as well, doctors, they used to work really with uh, natural remedies and stuff. And then we moved more and more away from it, isn't it? Yeah. And there's nothing wrong, you know, we're not saying there's nothing wrong and there's not a place for medication, you know, we're not saying that at all, you know. No, um, there is. There is a place for medication. Exactly. There is a place and, um, for, for your doctors, yeah. you know, yeah. um, because there's just certain things that you, we need our doctors for. Hmm. And... 
you know, we had doctors. I mean, I'm a, I'm a Christian. And in terms of when you read the Bible, you had Dr. Luke, you had, you know, you had all these people <coughs> in time gone by who were doctors. You had different, you had, you had the ministry, basically. I'll have some water, sorry. That's fine. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing is, you know, uh, like I said, you know, doctors, they, 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 they as well, you know, they used to describe herbs and plants. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, that's the original of medication is as well, actually, herb and plants. <coughs> more and more that it is done with yeah. chemicals and additives and, uh, and so on. But yeah. um, moving, moving away from that, because I think we don't want to do this video as well too long otherwise yeah. you know people lose um lose uh, concentration <laughs> even it's very interesting um oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you got a tickle <laughs> oh, yeah. um i would like to know now what is um what is the message you would like to give uh, people especially today uh, with what is going on with covid um is there a message you would like to? <coughs> she says, coughing. <laughs> That's fine. You okay? Have some more yeah. water. I'm okay. Yeah. Okay. So, what is the message you would like to pass on to 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 people in the current situation? Um, your takeaway for today. Um, takeaway is what it is. <coughs> <coughs> I would say, look deep within you. Don't think about um, what people will say. If you were to use natural um, ingredients, number one, as, as, as um, Paola said, medication have its place. So if you're on medication, don't just suddenly say, I'm going to stop taking my medication and I'm just going to um, use herbs for whatever ailment you've got. It is something that you have got to um, talk with, uh, with your doctor about because I think more and more and more doctors are becoming um, more knowledgeable about what nature have and how nature have everything in it to heal ourselves. And I do think that at some point, the pharmaceutical companies will come around to understanding that nature has everything in it for us. Because they do, do, they do use some natural ingredients in their products, not to the amount that will be um, a high percentage, but they do use some forms, but the remainder of it is mixed up of chalk coating, vitamin and fillers. Sometimes we get so used to medication that we become addicted to it. And the way to look at it is that try your, as much as you can and use natural ingredients. You know, the, yes, the internet have a lot, but just be careful what you, what you read on the internet. And one of the things I don't do is buy any medication over the internet, basically. Plant and herbs, you can research them. You have um, Paola who understands, the, who understands plant and herbs. Um, you have myself who was brought up on it. I grew up in the garden. I grew up playing in the garden. I grew up playing in the dirt and everything else. Um, and I understand how that can bring the nutrients uh, to, to your body. So investigate. Mm make a change because our immunity is so important our immune system is so important to our well-being our gut cleansing our gut is so if you think about it if you think about your sewage system at home and you have your sink where your dirty water goes and it goes down to the sewage think of your body your lymphatic system you have your lymph nodes you have your lymphatic system and everything that is not good within your body needs to go through your lymphatic system to get out of your body. So think of your lymphatic system as your drainage system where everything that needs to get out of your body to detoxify your body needs to come out. 
if you don't clean your, let's say your cesspit is overflowing, it overflows into your garden, and it means you can't eat anything in your garden at all because now everything is, uh, um, everything is uh, get uh, mucky and smelly and everything. And that's why we have our kidneys and our liver, and they need to work together, basically. So when you have something overflowing, it then overflowing and start damaging other parts of your body. So your immune system, your lymphatic system, they are key to the functions of your body. Mm -hmm. So I would say if you've never done a detox before, you should start doing one. Mm -hmm. Because as you do that, that will help you. Mm -hmm. It will help your body. It will help to distress you. It will help your skin. It will help your organs. There is just so much benefits in detoxifying your body. Mm. It's good for you to like, um, not to forget the gut. I think the gut is really important. The gut, yeah, the like gut is so, is so mm. important, so important in cleaning your gut out because you need your, in your gut, you have something called your probiotics, which is your good enzymes. So your good enzymes is breaking up everything, getting everything going. But you also need your bad enzymes so it can work together. And on top of that, you need, so you have your prebiotic and your probiotic, and you have your enzymes. So your enzymes come along and thinking, okay, let's keep everything flowing nicely. So it's important for your gut to be healthy. With a healthy gut, come a healthy mind, come a healthy body, come healthy skin. And that's why you need to work from within. Mindset, you need to look at your mindset and you need to change your mindset. Everything is changing and everything is adapting. So we need to adapt. I know most of us don't like change, but change, we, change comes every day. Everything, nothing is the same. Everything changes. Nothing is staying yeah. still or standing stagnant. Yeah. Everything changes every single day. Each day you wake up, you look at the sunrise, it looks different from the day before. Wow. And you just have to work with that. That's nature. If you work with that, you will find your life feels a lot better. You'll, uh, you're less stressed. Um, you're not going to like punch on anyone because then your body is able to calm itself, basically. So I think working on the gut is so important for your health and your wellness. Mm, beautiful. That's really good. That's really good. That's really beautiful. And um, I think... It's really important as well to move to better health. It's it's tiny baby steps, and um, to help yeah. you on the way with these tiny baby steps. Yeah. To move to better yeah. health, um, you know, contact us and uh, contact Verna. And um, Verna, what is the best way to to reach you? Um, how can people get in touch with you? Well, the best way you can reach me, you can reach me via my email, which is Verna V E R N A at lavie, L-A-V-I-E, S-P-A dot co dot U-K. Or you can phone me um, on my mobile, which is 078-28-181-254. Or you can contact me via um, uh, Facebook or LinkedIn. So if you look for me anywhere there, you will find me. And it's, you know, we, we got into this. I got into this because I wanted to help people. I wanted to be a nurse because I didn't want to see people in hospital. I wanted them to come, get whatever help they need, and then go back to their home. Likewise, what we do here is about helping people. And we want to help you heal yourself because you have the ability to heal yourself. Your body has the ability. It starts with the mind. It's your mindset. It starts in the mind. And as you look within yourself and you look at the mind and you start making, as Paula said, those small incremental steps. No baby start walking, born and start walking immediately. <laughs> the baby have got to learn to turn. It have got to learn to stand. It have, before even doing that, it has to crawl. So those are the steps you need to take. Think of it as baby steps as for all yourself and make those baby steps and you will get to your destiny. Your destiny 
is to be healthy. Your destiny is to be have a, a free mind. Your destiny is not to think about what other people say and think. Your destiny is only you can get you there. Nobody else can. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you so much, Verna. It was a pleasure talking to you. And um, I look forward to continue our conversation at some stage. So uh, yeah. bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs> bye, everyone. Thank bye. you for having us.